lazy over this weekend. I, I just, for the better part, of chapter 22 problems. Problem number one. A gasoline engine absorbs 2,500 2, joules of heat and performs 1,000 joules of mechanical work in each cycle. The efficiency of the engine is... Okay, looking at problem number one, we absorb 2,500 joules of heat and perform 1,000 joules of mechanical work. And by definition, the efficiency of something is what you gain what you give. And in this case, we're going to gain some work and we're going to give some heat from the hot reservoir. So this would be work over the heat that we give that is intaked and taken from the hot reservoir. Uh, in terms of values, we're going to do a thousand joules of work or 2,500 joules of intake, so this gives us an efficiency of 0.4. And if we put that in terms of uh, percentage, that would be 40%. Um, so that's our answer for this one. Problem number two. A gasoline engine absorbs 2,500 joules of heat, performs 1,000 joules of mechanical work in each cycle. The amount of heat expelled in each cycle is... Well, this is uh, the same setup as in the previous problem. Uh, we have the same efficiency, but we want to find the amount of heat expelled. By definition, the work done is equal to the amount of heat that we intake minus the amount of heat we expel. In other words, the amount of heat we take from the hot reservoir minus the amount of heat we expel to the cold reservoir. So we can find the amount of heat that we expel to the cold reservoir from this, and that will be the amount that we have going to the hot reservoir minus the work done. And for the given values, we took in 2,500 joules of heat from the hot reservoir, we did a thousand joules of work, so 1,500 joules will have to be expelled to the cold reservoir. That would be answer B. Problem number three, a heat pump has a coefficient of performance of four. If the heat pump absorbs 20 calories of heat from the cold outdoors in each cycle, the heat expelled in calories to the warm indoors is... Okay, in this problem, uh, we're given the coefficient of performance for a heat pump. Let me uh, move over this way. And uh, like we had for efficiency, we can think of this as being what we gain for what we get. But for a heat pump, what you gain and what you give is different. In other words, for a heat pump, what you're gaining is the, uh, the work done, I'm, I'm sorry, no, what, what you gain is the amount of heat that you grab from the cold reservoir, because that's what you want. And what you give is how much work it's going to take to do that. So this is going to be uh, the amount of heat um, taken in from the cold reservoir over the amount of work. And for this problem, that was given as being four. So now we can find the um, amount of work done. So the work would equal the amount of heat we're going to gain over the coefficient of performance. And we're given that we took 20 calories out. So that would be 20 divided by 4, or 5 calories of work performed for this operation. Now, in either case, the work is always going to be the amount of heat we expel minus the amount of heat, or the amount of heat that goes into the hot reservoir minus the amount of heat that is exchanged from the cold reservoir. So in this case, let's see, we want the uh,
solving for the amount of heat that uh, is going to be expelled to the warm indoors, the hot reservoir. That will be equal to the work plus the magnitude of the heat taken from the cold reservoir, which is 20. So this would be 25 calories. So that will be the amount of heat that we expel to the warm indoors. Ready? Yeah. Problem number four. A refrigerator has a coefficient of performance of four. If the refrigerator absorbs 30 calories of heat from the cold reservoir in each cycle, the heat expelled in calories into the heat reservoir is... This problem is similar to the last problem. Again, the coefficient of performance is what we're going to gain for what we give. In this case, what we're going to gain is how much heat is actually taken from the cold reservoir. And what we're going to give is how much work it's going to take to do that, to, to pull that heat out. So, gain that we give amount of heat from the cold reservoir over the work done, and we're told that that is equal to four. So the work done will equal the amount of heat taken from the cold reservoir divided by the coefficient of performance. That'll be 30 calories divided by four. or 7.5 calories. We want to find the heat expelled in calories into the heat reservoir. Now again, this work by definition is the amount of heat expelled from the hot reservoir minus the amount of heat taken from the cold reservoir in this case. It's always going to be the quantity of heat involved with the hot reservoir minus the quantity of heat involved with the cold reservoir. So, quantity of heat expelled to the hot reservoir is going to equal the work plus the magnitude of the heat intake from the cold reservoir. So this would be 7.5 plus 30 or 37.5 calories. Answer B. Problem number five. A lawnmower has a six horsepower engine. One horsepower is equal to 750 watts. If the engine has an efficiency of 20% and the throttle is such that the engine cycles 10 times a second, find the heat that is expelled in one cycle. All right, so we have a six horsepower engine. And uh, let's take a look at that. We know that power is the amount of work we do per time. And in this case, that's six horsepower, but there's 750 watts per horsepower. So this is going to be a total of 3,000, no, 4,500 watts of power, joules per second. And if I figure that uh, hmm, we, have, we have a cycle, we're told that it cycles 10 times a second. That's the frequency. The frequency is 10 hertz. So that means that the period for one cycle would be 1 over the frequency, or 1 tenth of a second. That's the time we're, we're thinking about right there. So the amount of work we're going to do is the power times the time from just rearranging this. And that's going to be 4,500 joules per second or a watt times one tenth of a second, and that's going to equal 450 joules. So that's how much work we're going to do with this engine. It's 450 joules every second. We want to find the amount of heat that's expelled. So we want to find the heat that's going um, to the cold reservoir. And we're told that the efficiency is 20%. So we can find the, we've found the work, we can find the heat from the hot reservoir from the efficiency. Because we know that efficiency is what you gain or what you give. In this case, since the engine, we're going to gain work. And what we give is the amount of heat that comes in from the hot reservoir. So 
we can get QH from this. So we'll say that the amount of heat that goes to the hot comes in from the hot reservoir will be the work divided by the efficiency. 450 divided by 0.2, and that comes out to 2,250 joules. So now we have the work done. We have the amount of heat that came in from the hot reservoir. We can solve for the amount of heat that's going to be expelled. So we know from the definition of work as the amount of heat that comes in to the amount that's expelled to the cold reservoir for an engine. So Q sub C is going to equal the amount of heat expelled minus the work. That's going to be 2,250 joules minus 450 joules, which would be 1,800 joules. So that is the amount of heat that is expelled to the cold reservoir in one cycle, 1,800 joules, answer A. Okay, problem number six. A steam engine is operating at a theoretical maximum efficiency of 60%. If the waste heat has a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or 38 degrees centigrade, what is the temperature of the boiler? All right, in this problem, uh, let's see what, what's given. We're told that the efficiency is uh, 60%. By definition for maximum efficiency, that is, um, 1 minus the temperature of the cold reservoir over the temperature of the hot reservoir. And we're told that is 60% or 0.6 in this case. We're also told that the cold reservoir is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 38 degrees centigrade. So we have the cold reservoir is 38 degrees centigrade. We cannot use that temperature in that formula because we're dealing with fractions here and we this is a particular scale that has a zero in the middle of that scale you know and goes negative and positive we need to only use Kelvin temperatures for that so we need to convert this immediately to Kelvin so our cold temperature that we want to use is 311 Kelvin Let's find the hot temperature. So rearranging this first equation, we would have um, that uh, 1 minus the efficiency will equal the cold temperature or the hot temperature. So that means 1 minus 0.6 equals 311 over T hot. So T hot is going to equal 311 divided by 0.4. And that comes out to 778 degrees Kelvin. However, uh, none of our answers are in degrees Kelvin. We are given in degrees centigrade, so we need to convert that back to centigrade, which would be 778 minus 273, or in degrees centigrade. That gives us. 505 degrees centigrade. So that is the temperature of our boiler temperature. The closest one is 504, which is answer D. Law number seven. A company that produces pulsed gas heaters claims their efficiency is approximately 90%. If an engine operates between 250 degrees centigrade and 25 degrees centigrade, what is its maximum thermodynamic efficiency? All right, let's take a look at this one, uh, pulse gas heaters. We have, a, we have the engine operating between 250 degrees centigrade and 25 degrees centigrade. Again, centigrade is not the scale that we can use for this kind of formula. We have to change everything into Kelvin. So even though uh, our efficiency equals one minus cold temperature or hot temperature, we must remember that these temperatures should be in Kelvin. So our cold temperature, which is 25 degrees centigrade, will be 25 plus 273 or 298 Kelvin. 
and our hot temperature, which is 250 degrees centigrade, will be uh, 250 is 273, or 523 Kelvin. So our efficiency is going to be 1 minus cold temperature over hot temperature. And if we calculate that out, that comes out to 0.43 or forty three percent efficiency. What this is saying then, based on uh, the maximum possible Carnot efficiency, maximum you could possibly get between two temperature reservoirs, this uh, the best possible engine could only have an efficiency of forty three percent, which means if the company claims ninety percent. Um, they're using some funny number somewhere. They're not telling the truth. Problem number eight. A new electric power plant has an efficiency of 42%. For every 100 barrels of oil needed to run the turbine, how many are essentially lost as waste heat in barrels of oil to the environment? All right, so... Well, number eight. Again, any kind of efficiency is what you gain for what you give. In this case, that would be uh, how much work we get for how much energy comes in from the hot reservoir. And we're told that um, for every hundred barrels of oil needed to run the turbine, how many are essentially lost as waste heat? So, we are burning 100 barrels of oil, and that's not uh, the work that we're getting. That is the amount that we're burning. That's the energy coming from the hot reservoir. So our QH is 100 barrels. We're told we have efficiency of 0.42. So the work that we're talking about is the efficiency times what we're putting in, and that's going to be uh, 0.42 times 100, or 42 barrels of work we're getting out of this uh, power plant, 42 barrels of work for every 100 barrels we're burning, and the amount expelled to the atmosphere is the amount that we're burning minus the amount that we use, which would be 100 minus 42, or 58 barrels. It be barrels of energy that is just going to the environment. Problem <laughs> number nine, an 800 megawatt electric power plant has efficiency of 30%. It loses its waste heat in large cooling towers. Approximately how much waste heat in megajoules is discharged to the atmosphere per second? All right, let's take a look at this. So we have an 800 megawatt power electric plant. And uh, we're going to look at everything per second. So in, in terms of uh, power, let's see. Since power equals work per time, the amount of work we're going to do is power times time. And we're going to have about 800 megawatts, 800 joules per second. And we want to find out what's going to happen every second. So we're talking 8 times 10 to the 8 joules of work being done per second. Now the efficiency is 30%. And efficiency by definition is uh, the work we're going to do or the amount of we take in from the hot reservoir. So the amount we take in from the hot reservoir is going to equal the work divided by the efficiency, 8 times 10 to the 8, divided by 30% or 0.3. 
And that's going to give us 2.67 times 10 to the 9 joules. So we're going to have to take in that much energy from some source um, in order to do this much work for the power plant. So the amount that we're going to discharge to the atmosphere, since work equals the amount we take in minus the amount we discharge to the cold reservoir, the amount we're going to discharge to the cold reservoir, in other words, the atmosphere, is going to be the amount we take in minus the work we do. Just rearranging this equation right here. And that's going to be 2.67 times 10 to the 9 minus 0.8 times 10 to the 9. Look at it that way. So that would be 1.87 times 10 to the 9 joules. Or approximately 1900 megajoules. of energy expelled to the atmosphere. Problem number 10. A homeowner has a new oil furnace which has an efficiency of 60%. For every 100 barrels of oil needed to heat his house, how much, barrels, how much in barrels of oil goes up the chimney as waste heat? Good. All right, now this one, uh, we have a, uh, a new oil furnace has efficiency of 60%. And so let's write that down. Efficiency would be uh, work that we get done for every amount that we bring in, and that's 60% or 0.6. And uh, we're told that the amount that we're going to have to um, burn for the, to heat this house is 100 barrels. So that's the amount that we're going to take from the hot reservoir. So the work is going to equal uh, the efficiency times that amount. So that's going to equal 0 0.6 times 100, or 60 barrels. Sixty barrels of uh, oil for every 100 that we burn. How much is going to go up the chimney as waste heat? Well, work equals the amount we take in minus the amount that we expel. So the amount that we expel to the cold reservoir, in other words, known as the outside, will be the amount we take in minus the work. So that would be 100 minus 60, or 40 barrels. 40 barrels of oil. So 40 barrels of our oil, answer C, is what is um, expended as heat through the chimney. Problem number 11, one kilogram of chilled water at zero degrees centigrade is placed in a freezer which is kept at zero degrees Fahrenheit or minus 18 degrees centigrade. Approximately how much electrical energy in kilocalories is needed just to freeze the water if the room temperature is maintained at 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees centigrade? All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, We have a freezer, which is kept at 0 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 18 degrees Celsius. So that is our cold temperature. So let's do that first. Cold temperature is minus 18 degrees Celsius. As I said before, we need to change that immediately to uh, Kelvin. So this will be uh, minus 18, plus 273, gives us 255. Kelvin. And let's do the same thing for a hot temperature. Hot temperature was uh, 24 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature outside the uh, freezer. So that's going to be uh, 273 is 24 or 297 Kelvin. All right. Now, we're going to run this with these temperatures. Our coefficient of performance, which is the amount that we're going to uh, extract, given the work, is by definition, in terms of these temperatures, 
is the cold temperature over the hot minus the cold temperature. And that, in this case, would be 255 over 297 minus 255, which will give us 6.07. So that is our coefficient of performance for this um, heat pump. Now we want to be able to extract the energy in order to freeze this water. In order to freeze this water, we need to take the amount of energy uh, for the heat of fusion for that amount of water. And that amount that we're talking about to extract is due to the phase change between uh, water and ice. And we have one kilogram, so that's a thousand grams. The latent heat of fusion for water is 79.6 calories per gram. So we're talking 79,600 calories is how much we need to extract from the water in order to freeze it. So that is our, our cue from the cold reservoir that we need to take out. Right. Well, our coefficient of performance as said, is that amount over the work. So the work we need to do is going to be that amount over the coefficient of performance. And that's going to be 79,600 calories over 6.07 gives us 13,110 calories, approximately 13 kilocalories. That's how much work uh, electrical energy is going to be needed to freeze the water if the room temperature is maintained at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius. Law number 12, an autom automobile engine operates with an overall efficiency of 12%. How much energy is delivered as waste heat in gallons of gasoline for every 10 gallons of fuel burned? All right, upon number 12, uh, we're going to burn 10 gallons of gasoline, so that is the amount that we're going to get from our, say, hot reservoir. And our efficiency is the work that we're going to perform for the amount that we get from the hot reservoir, and that's told to be 12%, 0.12, so the work is going to be the efficiency times the amount that we burn, and that's going to be 12% times 10 gallons, or 1.2 gallons. So for the automobile, 1.2 gallons worth is actually going to go into the function of the automobile. And the waste heat will be equal to the amount that we burn minus the work that we use, which would be 10 minus 1.2 or 8.8 .8 gallons. So 8.8 .8 gallons of that original gasoline is going to be uh, delivered as waste heat um, to the environment. Law number 13, an engine is designed to obtain energy from the temperature gradient of the ocean. What is the thermodynamic efficiency of such an engine if the temperature of the surface of the water is 59 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees centigrade, and the temperature well below the surface is 41 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees centigrade. All right, so uh, we have a uh, we have an engine, a thermal engine. We're going to utilize the temperature gradient of the ocean. What a what a novel idea! And uh, our cold temperature is 5 degrees centigrade, which of course we need to immediately change that to Kelvin. So that would be uh, 278 Kelvin, 273 plus 5. And our hot temperature is 15 degrees centigrade. So that's going to be 288 Kelvin. And when you look at it that way, there is not a whole lot of difference between those temperatures. Our maximum efficiency is 1 minus the cold temperature of the hot temperature reservoir. That's going to be 1 minus 278 
divided by 288, and that's equal to 0 0.0347. Or that's an efficiency of approximately 3.5 percent. Not great as far as efficiency goes, but um, there's a lot of heat in the ocean, so you know you'd have a lot of energy to use. Just not great to just use that kind of gradient for for uh, useful purposes. Problem 14, exactly 500 grams of ice are melted at a temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The latent heat uh, fusion of ice is 333 joules per um, Kelvin. The change in entropy in joules per Kelvin is, the uh, latent heat of uh, fusion of ice should be 333 joules per, per kilogram, I guess, right? 33 joules per gram. I, I just the units are not on my copy here. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, 14. Temperature is melted at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which we all know to be zero degrees centigrade. So our temperature involved here is 273 Kelvin, and it's going to be constant the whole time. And the amount of heat in order to uh, melt 500 grams of ice is for this kind of phase change, it would be the, the mass of the ice times latent heat of fusion. That's going to be 500 grams times 333 joules per gram. And that's going to be 166,500 joules. That's how much energy we're going to need to heat. By definition, the change in entropy at constant temperature is the amount of heat um, involved in the reversible process divided by the temperature, in this case, which is constant. So that's going to be this total phase change heat or the temperature, which will be 166,500 divided by 273 gives us 609.9 .9 joules per Kelvin of entropy change. And so that would be answer D, 610 joules per Kelvin for this phase change. Problem number 15, when water of mass M and specific heat C is heat from an absolute temperature T1 to an absolute temperature T2, this change in entropy is? Okay, so uh, for any particular change in entropy, we would have the integration from the initial temperature to the final temperature of the heat involved in a re reversible process, which could be a change in heat, over the temperature. Now, in this case, we're talking about uh, water being heated. So we're, the heat in, uh, involved in specific heat is uh, MC uh, delta T. So we're going to put that in there. So this is going to be MC dt over T from T initial to T final. The mass and the specific heat are constant, so we'll take that out of the integral. So this is going to be MC integral uh, dt over T, T initial, T final, which we can see that that is uh, indeed, how am I doing for room here? You're good. MC natural log of the temperature Evaluate from T initial to T file, which would be MC natural log T file minus natural log T initial, or MC natural log T final divided by T initial because the 
difference between two logs is the log of their quotient. And so that's our answer. And uh, of course, uh, T final in this case is T2 and T initial is T1. So our answer is A in this case. Call number 16, the change in entropy of one kilogram of water that is heated from 50 degrees centigrade to 100 degrees centigrade is in calories per Kelvin. All right, and this, uh, in this problem, we're going to actually utilize what we just did in the last problem. Um, we'll say that the uh, problem number 16, change in entropy should equal MC natural log of the final temperature over the initial temperature. In this case, we're going from 50 degrees centigrade to 100 degrees centigrade, but we have to be careful again that these temperatures are expressed in kelvins, not uh, centigrade. So our um, final temperature, which is 100 degrees centigrade, would be 373 Kelvin. And our initial temperature, which is 50 degrees centigrade, would be 323 Kelvin. So that's what's going to go into that formula there. So our change in entropy is our mass which is going to be one kilogram, which we'll express in terms of grams, since our specific heat will be in terms of grams. So this will be a thousand grams. Specific heat of water is one gram, uh, I'm sorry, one calorie per gram per degree Kelvin. So that's one. Natural log of the final temperature or the initial temperature. That comes out to 143.9 calories per kilo. We choose answer C, 144 calories per kilo. 17. A change in entropy of a mass, M, of a solid substance which has a latent heat of fusion of L and melts at a temperature T is. All right, let's look at this. We have, uh, in general, the change in entropy would be an integral of the heat involved in a reversible process over the temperature. But in this case, we're going to have a phase change at a particular temperature. So the temperature is going to be constant. So we'll take that out of the integral and say that this is going to be 1 over the temperature times the integral, I guess I can think of this, integral of a change in reversible heat, which would simply be the amount of heat divided by the temperature. And for this phase change, that's going to be the mass times the latent heat of fusion divided by the temperature. For this phase change from, uh, from liquid to uh, a solid substance that is melting to liquid. Okay. 18. Since the uh, latent heat of fusion for ice is 333 joules per gram, the change in entropy in calories per Kelvin when one kilogram of ice melts is ready. All right, well, let's take a look at this. Uh, we're given the latent heat of fusion for ice is 333 joules per gram. But eventually we want to find the change in entropy in calories per, kilo, per kelvin. So let's change this latent heat in terms of calories. Uh, we know that there is um, one calorie per 4.186 joules. So we divide 333 by 4.186, we should get uh, 79.6 calories per gram or latent heat diffusion for water. Uh, now from our previous result, we have that the uh, change in entropy for a phase change of this sort would be the amount of heat in the phase change divided by the temperature at which the phase change takes place. So this would be the uh, amount of heat in the phase change, which is going to be 1,000 grams. Times 79.6 calories per gram. 
and we're going to do this all at zero degrees centigrade because ice melts at zero degrees centigrade, which would be 273 Kelvin. That gives us 291 calories per degree Kelvin. That will be the entropy, entropy involved in melting one kilogram of ice. Law number 19, if n moles of an ideal gas are compressed isothermally from an initial volume of V1 to a final volume of V2, the change in entropy is all right, in this number 19, we're going to have isothermal compression from initial volume V1 to the final volume V2. Now, for an isothermal compression, the, um, since, since isothermal, that means it's all at the same temperature, which means that the internal energy of the system is not going to change. So by the first law, the amount of heat involved is going to equal the negative amount of work um, on the system. And so that's going to equal from the previous derivation, NRT, natural log, final volume over initial volume, V2 or V1. We did that in the previous problem set. Now in this case, the temperature is constant, so we'd say Change in entropy is the integral of, uh, from initial to final of our change in energy over the temperature. So that's just going to be our energy, the heat energy involved over the temperature. And that's going to be nRT natural log of V2 or V1 over the temperature. And that cancels out. So this will be just N times our gas constant R, natural log, final volume over initial volume. Independent of the temperature itself. And so our answer is A. Okay. Problem number 20. Determine the change in entropy in joules per Kelvin when five moles of an ideal gas at zero degrees centigrade are compressed isothermally from an initial volume of 100 centimeters, cubic centimeters to a final volume of 20 cubic centimeters.